हाई हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल रेसी डर्मा For those who are new to this channel, I am Dr. Ram Sishrut and I am a dermatologist from Hyderabad, and I make lot of educational content on dermatology. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon because if you hit the bell icon, you'll get the updates as soon as I post the videos. Today's topic is on anatomy of hair and uh, its applied aspects. I have divided this video into uh, into two parts. I know I'm late this week uh, in posting the video. Uh, the reason is whatever the images you see in these videos of hair cycle and uh, the anatomy of hair, I have made them personally, paint and PowerPoint skills. So if you like them, please like this video and uh, share this video with your friends. Let's get started with embryology of hair. The first dermal signaling for hair generation occurs around 10th week of gestation leading to the formation of epithelial placode. This is controlled by box genes. Initially, the hair follicle appears as a small concentration of ectodermal cells called hair germ or hair bud in the basal layer of two layered epidermis or primitive epidermis this is what happens the hair germ which is formed recruits the dermal cells to form a dense concentrate that prom further promotes the differentiation of hair germ specialized mesenchymal cells organize in a small condensate directly below the basement membrane which stimulates the overlying epithelial cells to invaginate and penetrate into the dermis forming a epidermal peg. As I said you previously, the mesenchymal condensation becomes little more denser and the signaling for hair peg generation increases. Now, the hair germ proliferates to form a rod-like hair peg that pushes down the dermis. The tip of the hair peg expands to form a bulbous structure called as hair bulb. This is how slowly the bulbous hair peg pushes the dermis and forms a hair bulb. As the bulbous hair peg keeps forming, there are two more swellings which appear on the hair follicle. The first swelling is for formation of sebaceous gland. The second swelling is for the formation of electar pili muscle. Dermal cells beneath the tip of the bulb proliferate to form dermal papillae and invaginate into the bulb. The epithelial cells of the hair bulb constitute of germinal matrix which later give rise to hair. As the cells of the germinal matrix proliferate, so there is formation of hair shaft and inner root sheath and slowly these cells move upward to form the hair follicle. The peripheral cells of the developing hair follicle form the outer root sheet. The melanoblasts also invade the cells to produce melanin which is given to the proliferating cells in the germinal matrix. Now, before going into the details of hair anatomy, let's know about different types of hair which are present on the skin. There are four types of hair which are present on the skin. The first one is lanigo hair, the second one is villous hair, the third one is intermediate hair and the fourth one is terminal hair. Let's discuss about lanigo hair in the starting. This is wool-like hair which is present the, over the fetal skin. It is usually shred by 8, 8 to 9 months of gestation or after the birth. It is usually thin and is unmedulated. The one feature of lanigo hair is it is usually longer than the villous hair. The second comes the villous hair. Villous hair are small hair with a diameter less than 0.03 mm and length less than 1 cm. They lack melanin and medulla. They have a thin external root sheath and a short stella. These two are important features because in AGA 
when there is progressive miniaturization of terminal hair the stella the stella is usually longer and is present in the subcutaneous tissue or fat the outer root sheet is usually thicker this feature helps in the differentiation from a true villous hair to a miniaturized terminal hair coming to intermediate hair the intermediate hair are usually little thicker than the villous hair they have a diameter approximately uh, around 0.03 to 0.06 mm and the hair bulbs are situated in the reticular dermis coming to terminal hair terminal hair are large hair with a diameter more than 0.06 mm usually the terminal hair have medulla and are often pigmented the terminal hair are rooted in subcutaneous tissue or in the deep dermis i request every one of you to pay little attention towards this slide this slide demonstrated the important structures which are present in a hair follicle hair follicle can be broadly divided into four parts the first one is infundibulum This extends from the epidermis till the opening of the sebaceous gland. The second one is isthmus. It extends from the opening of the sebaceous gland to the insertion of erector pili muscle. The third one is stem. Stem extends from the erector pili muscle till the Adamson's fringe, which is just above the bulb region. The bulb is the bottom part of the hair follicle. Now. Let's discuss about each and every part in detail. Let's go from down to up. The first one is dermal papilla. Dermal papilla is usually flask shaped and is connected to the perifollicular dermal sheath. It is made up of specialized fibroblast like cells embedded in an extracellular matrix which contains proteins and proteoglycans. It is the place where hair follicle gets its vascular supply. The size of the hair shaft of the hair follicle is directly proportional to the size of the dermal papillae. Dermal papillae plays a major role in induction and maintenance of the hair cycle and also matrix cell division. Androgens and other growth factors play a major role in regulation of the of this process. Now let's discuss about the hair bulb. Hair bulb of an anagen hair follicle lies at the level of subcutaneous fat. It contains basophilic germinative layer which is called as matrix. Matrix surrounds the dermal papillae. Matricial cells divide every 24 to 48 hours. Melanocytes are present in this region which give the melanin to the matricial cells and the keratinocytes of the hair follicle. Hair follicle bulb can be divided into two parts. by a imaginary line called as line of aber the aber line divides the hair bulb into two portions the lower region of undifferentiated cells that are mitotically active matricial cells and the upper region of cells that are differentiated into out inner root sheet and the hair shaft the inner root sheet in the figure is shown with pink color the hair shaft is shown with brown color The grey color is the dermal sheath along with the dermal papillae and the white color cells are the cells of outer root sheath. Matricial cells are immunologically privileged cells. Just above the bulb region lies the Adamson's fringe. Adamson's fringe is located at upper margin of the keratinous zone of the hair follicles where the nucleated hair shafts cornify completely to a nucleated hair the main importance of the ab- adamson's fringe is that when a fungus le- in case of tinea capitis invades the hair follicle it extends to till this region from the above downwards and it cannot pass this region it forms a ring of my mycium at this region so adamson's fringe acts as a barrier preventing the living hair cells to get affected by the fungus now let's discuss about the layers of the hair follicle just above the level of adamson's fringe the keratinocytes of the hair follicle gets completely keratinized and the bulb keratinocytes have a peculiar property to differentiate into six different lay- cell lines the bulb keratinocytes give rise to two important structures which is inner root sheet and 
and hair shaft. The outer root sheet is probably formed from the multiplication of undifferentiated isthmic cells which are the cells of the epidermis. So here you can see initially a uh, hair shaft consists of three layers. The innermost layer is medulla. The layer outside the medulla is the cortex and the layer out of the outside the cortex is cuticle. Inner root sheath surrounds the hair shaft. The cuticle of inner root, root sheath lies in close proximity with the cuticle of the hair shaft. The cells of these cuticles are almost interlocked and they grow together. Outside the cuticle of inner root sheath lies the Huxley's layer and outside that lies the Henley's layer. Just outside the inner root sheath, there lies a companion layer which I have demonstrated in a green color. This companion layer, this layer is made up of the inner black root sheath and the outer root that are sheath longitudinally chromosomes and moves along with it during the hair shaft elongation. The companion layer disintegrates at the level of tricholemal keratinization which is a process which occurs which is a keratinization process of the outer root sheath which I will talk later in the next video when I am discussing, discussing isthmus. The outer root sheath which is a blue one lies outside the companion layer at the base of the bulb which is about two layers in thickness while it comes to the isthmus it becomes four to six layers the keratinization process of the outer root sheath is a by a process called as tricholemal keratinization outside the outer root sheath lies the dermal sheath which is continuation of the basal lamina of the epidermal basement membrane let's now talk about isthmus as I said you, at the mid portion of isthmus, the inner root sheet desquamates and disappears. At this point, tricholemal keratinization of outer root sheet takes place. Tricholemal keratinization means there is direct keratinization without the formation of granular layer in the outer root sheet cells. The hair follicle stem cells reside at the base of the isthmus. These daughter cells of the stem cells are called as transiently amplifying cells move to the lower part of the hair follicle as the outer root sheath. Retinocytes in the bulge area are multipotent. They can give rise to multiple types of cells like cells of the cells like keratinocytes, sebaceous gland cells and seven different types of cells that belong to the lower follicle. This area is usually becomes prominent during the telogen phase of the hair, uh, hair cycle. This area has high neural supply and also multiple Merkel cells which might play a role in hair cycling. In fundibulum, it is derived from the Latin word which means funnel. The keratinization of the infundibulum is similar to the keratinization of the epidermis. The stratum corneum desquamates into the lumen of the hair follicle. Through the lumen, sebum and desquamated cells come out of the hair follicle. It is divided into two parts. The outermost part is called as acroinfundibulum, which has differentiated cells, and the inner part, which is downwards, is called as infrainfundibulum, which has undifferentiated cells. Let's discuss about the hair shaft in little uh, in detail. The hair fiber or the hair shaft is a portion of the hair that projects out of the skin of the scalp. It is cylindrical, keratinized and often pigmented filament. The hair shaft structure consists of dead cells that have been filled with hard keratinous substance combined with small amounts of water. The hair shaft mainly consists of three different parts which is medulla, cortex and cuticle. The cuticle is the outermost part and protects the inner and softer tissue of the cortex. The cuticle being a protective layer also controls the water content of the hair fiber. It imparts shiny glossy appearance to the hair. Cortex lies in the middle of the hair shaft. These cortical cells give bulk shape, elasticity and curl to the hair. Medulla is the innermost layer. It is composed of 
loosely connected keratinized cells the composition of the medulla cells can vary even with same hair in humans the medulla may be as much as one third of the diameter of the hair the formation of medulla can be continuous discontinuous or fragmented in coarse hair it is usually either continuous or fragmented whereas in fine hair it appears discontinuous or it may be absent altogether the cuticle part contains multiple macro filaments which are again further made up of micro filaments these micro filaments are further made up of proto filaments which entangle together and these all structures together give strength to the hair shaft coming to the vascular supply of hair follicle hair follicles are surrounded by a dense and continuous plexus of capillaries but uh, dermal papilla is the structure which which directly gets vascularity from the blood vessels it contains capillaries which arise from the deep dermal plexus hair follicle is well innervated with nerves c nerve fibers and sympathetic fibers form a ring at the neck of the hair follicle whereas the c fibers with a delta fibers form a ring at about the mid half of the isthmus there are other neural sub neural networks which supply to the erector pili muscle multiple nerve endings are present the most Im- important ones which are present in human beings are free nerve endings pilorifinin nerve endings merkel nerve endings the concept of follicular unit was described in 1984 it is nothing but 3 to 4 hair follicles lying at very close proximity to each other the cro- proximity is more pronounced above the level of insertion of erector pylori muscle each follicular unit con- can contain about 1 to 5 hair but 2 to 3 hairs are common as i said you multiple follicles in a follicular unit are lie very close above the layer of insertion ab- above the level of insertion of erector pylori but in number of cases their roots which are present in the adipose tissue lie away from each other this concept is called as follicular splaying it is very important to understand this concept so here ends the structure of hair follicle let's brush up a little bit what we have learned so the hair shaft is the innermost structure which is our hair it consists of three parts which is medulla cortex and cuticle outside the hair shaft is the inner root sheet the innermost layer is the in cuticle of the inner root sheet Out, outside that there is huxley's layer and outside that there is henley's layer outside the henley's layer there is a small companion layer which connects the inner root sheet with the outer root sheet outer root sheet is formed from the extension of the epidermis and also from the stem cells which are present at the erector pylori muscle inner root sheath disintegrates at the middle of the isthmus and approximately at the same point there is tricolemmal keratinization of the outer root sheath dermal papilla is a very important structure it provides vascularity and nutrition to the germ cells and matricial cells of the hair bulb the dermal papillae continues with the dermal fibrous sheath